Uh, we are again, mm -hmm. again in Women Matters, and I gave over to the suggestion, give over to the suggestion of Gertraud. So you go ahead. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm uh, inviting you to share your good news since last time or interesting challenges. <laughs> And what's your mood at the moment? And what's your desire to mood when you go out <laughs> of this session? Well, I start. Uh, I'm still wrestling with lucid dreaming. Excellent books, excellent suggestions, what to do and what to do during the day. And then I dream such horribly stupid uh, <laughs> nonsense. Uh, and I should actually, I should just ask myself, how odd is this? And I, I don't, and I wake up and I'm terribly frustrated. So uh, there is a project and it just seems to evade me. And uh, I'm not sure what to do about it because actually I heard that it's non-dualistic awareness when you manage your dreams. But it's, yeah, it's frustrating. And this morning, it's, it was such a stupid dream. And I didn't, I didn't ask, how odd is this? How am I dreaming? How can that be? So I hope when, we go, when I go out of this meeting, I know what I could do. And I pass on to Hanili. Thank you, Monia. I just swam earlier, so I'm feeling in flow. Um, I was sharing a little bit with Heidi earlier about something I watched on the weekend. And I would have loved to be in your parts of the world right now. Gertraud, Heidi, and Monia, but it didn't happen because of many reasons related to COVID and the organizers itself of the event that I wanted to come to. But many interesting things have happened this weekend um, that wouldn't have happened if I was in Germany. So <laughs> it's it, the synchronicity is just incredible of what happened this weekend and things I had to see and watch and become aware of. And so I'm in the process of, I've been in the process of acceptance in the end of last week because I was really disturbed that I couldn't come. <laughs> I really wanted to. And then the, and now looking back today to notice the synchronicities why I actually had to stay here, for now at least, um, was bringing a lot of inner peace. And even from some of the things I, I, I watched over the weekend was disturbing. Yet, there's part of me that there, it's, not, it's beyond hope. It's just a knowing that something better is emerging. And I'm delighted for that. So leaving this session, I would love to see what flows out of this session relating to what I experienced over the weekend specifically. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm passing on to Christine. Thank you. Um trying to organize my thoughts. I am trying not to just give you a list of things that have happened over the past uh, two weeks, but to really kind of settle into what I think is going on for me. Um, I, you know, I think I am still uh, looking for joy and I'm getting a little bit better at doing some daily practices. I uh, resumed that after having skipped for a while. So I'm doing that in the morning. Um, and that, uh, that makes me happy that I'm doing it. I'm not sure that I feel joy in the experience of it so much in that moment, but I do, uh, I, I'm joyful that I'm doing that. Um, did a, a San Diego Integral met on Saturday night and we did some We Space exercises. And um, I'm finding those uh, easier to do. Um, and by easier, I mean uh, the experience 
seems more readily accessible. Um, intellectually, I still understand it the same way I always have, but the experience of it is a little bit more accessible to me. And probably because I do that with, with you all uh, uh, in these hours that we spend together. Um, I think that's about it. Nothing dramatic to report in terms of things that are going on in my life, but uh, yeah, trying to check in with myself um, in that way a little bit more. So Heidi, have you checked in? No, I haven't yet, but I can do it now. So for me, I'm quite okay today. I was a little preoccupied this morning or yesterday because a friend of mine, she lives alone, she's almost 80. And she said that she felt ill and she had taken antibiotics. And so this morning I went there, but it was not so bad. It's, she says it's like normally she has a bronchitis, um, a chronic bronchitis. And when it blows up, then it's like this. So anyway, I will take care of her a little bit. And in the meantime, I have, I think I already said it, the whole family here. We are now a, a family of 10. Yesterday we did our second reunion, family reunion, and it's really, it feels to me like a family, I, like I have now a family and I'm grandmother, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's, that's really funny and, and I like it, the, especially the little girls are always around, now they are out, but they're playing with the dogs and then in the afternoon after that I will um, sing with them and read them uh, uh, fairy tales and it's, mm. it's really fun it's i i like it and it's strange you know as as, as if i uh, coming back into my own fa family of origin where we had to collaborate you know and i see how these children collaborate and and yeah. and do things and without burn i don't want but they just do and they ask you can i help and all these things so and also I discover that I like to do that, you know, to, to be there and to help them also with Italian, but help them in a way to invent things, you know, when afterwards I, when we sing out of the book, I say, which, which page do you want to find a song on? And I ask them in Italian, so they have to respond in Italian. And then, you know, like, like almost like a, a playing uh, way of, of, of teaching and learning. And that's really, I like it. And I'm wondering how it will go on. They are now four weeks more or less. They are here and it's going nicely. It's becoming a little cold, <laughs> but it finally rained. I tell you, how many times did I say that does, it doesn't rain, but it finally rained, but it became for me cold. For who comes from Germany, probably it's warm. <laughs> I find it cold. Yeah, and when I come out, I want to be uh, inspired like I feel often. So that's all. I give over to Victoria. Are you there? Are you awake? There's one. one. Yeah. Oops. I'm awake. Um, yeah. Okay. Hi. The question is. <laughs> no, I, I know the question. I, okay. I'm sorry. I, I apologize for being invisible, but I wasn't um, presentable yet. <laughs> I heard everything. I heard everybody and everything. And I'm really, um, it's actually, it's very serendipitous and synchronistic and um, miraculous that I'm here because I had a horrible um, I wasn't planning to come today, even though I always really miss you when I'm not, when I don't come, but I have my last, um, my last lecture tomorrow night, mm. my last Dante lecture in Paradiso, and um, I've got to get myself up to Paradiso <laughs> to get ready for it. Um, but I had such a horrible night last night. Um, I woke up several times in the night with such horrible dreams, and they, and they were really <laughs> crazy dreams. I don't know if yours, Monia, were horrible and crazy, but um, really intricate, surreal dreams. And um, so I woke up so um, sort of shaken up and disoriented and not ready for life that I thought the only cure is um, 
women matters and <laughs> and it's miraculous that it's monday morning and i can actually meet with all of you so i'm really grateful um so the so the the way i came like came into this space was very um still very shaken up and disturbed and confused and um just grappling with all of these kind of gruesome surrealistic images and um I'm hoping, and I'm, I don't even have to hope, I'm sure it'll happen, because um, it's already happening, to emerge from this hour, um, if not permanently healed, at least very, very much on my way to Paradiso. So that's my check-in. <laughs> oh, and is there everyone... Everyone, well, you, you, Gertrude, yeah, uh, I, I, are running I, the show, so I'm passing to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have done, uh, last Thursday, we had a marketing, self-promoting, self-marketing workshop for two hours. And so she was talking a little bit and then she said, okay, what is it that you want to do and didn't do yet? And And so it's like, now, now is the time, what do you need for it? And things like that. So I uploaded in LinkedIn, my video, a seven minute, well, like um, introductory video. And then the, you have, when you upload it, you have 15 minutes and then it becomes shorter six minutes and then there were two minutes and all of a sudden I started crying and my whole system was like don't do this <laughs> so it was I don't know how many red flags and and things just the last two minutes was for my system was as if the sable tooth tiger was in front of me not so much emotion but more this like frozen <laughs> And yeah, and, and I let it go and asked for support. And so it was my whole life came up where all the incidents that said, okay, I was like sharing myself and, and then either punished or ice cold water on it or whatever. Um, and, and it was not single in but but it was kind of a like a holographic thing so so i in the middle of the night i woke up and then i started writing <laughs> writing it was i don't know how many pages so this is like no wonder <laughs> i could say i haven't done that before and now it's time to to take off the lid so when Heidi talked uh, I said yeah playfulness we can you do you remember the agreements we we were going through with like 100% playfulness and not more than 69% seriousness that popped up and now the take the lid off was like um, are we open to being hard and mind blown <laughs> today and checking our assumptions with open-ended questions <laughs> i think a lot of assumptions are in the way to to be hard and mind blown um yeah so for me i'm i'm <sighs> this was one incident i i I talked about, but there are so many. <laughs> it's it's a crazy time at the moment, just really crazy. And and I normally I sleep well, but uh, lately I don't. So three thirty, and then that's it. Yeah, writing a lot. So that's at the moment. I'm a little bit exhausted from. <laughs> a break life please give me a break <laughs> and and um yeah and at the at the same time also inspired by by what's coming up and what i'm doing and i want to yeah my mood out of this session is inspired and and 
somehow not only heart and mind blown, but touched. Like, like there's something that, yeah, that resonated and could emerge out of this. So let's sink into present moment awareness and see what's come out up. What's the most powerful emergence or the happiest dream either for today? You can, I mean, you've said a little bit about it, but whatever that might be also for your life or can make it as big as you want to, but start from today. <laughs> so. What's the most powerful emergence or your happiest dream? Uh, listening to you and to Victoria, I'm wondering with how much playfulness can you approach the unconscious, which presents itself in dreams, dreams that linger on the whole day. So, um, and, and, and how much can we dare to go into these challenges playfully. I, I, I don't know, it's... Uh, huh. What was your question? <laughs> What's the most powerful emergence or the happiest dream? And actually, and it's okay that um, I, I just thought we might just sink in for a moment or for minute and then and then let it come out <laughs> emerge okay to go first. I can tell you that's not really a dream. It, it seems to be reality. Here in front of me, there are the children, happy, uh, laughing, jumping around. They're getting grapes from the grape, um, which is in front of my window. They want to make juice. And this is these are children like they were once they don't have a, an ipad they don't have a cell phone they don't have anything around during the day and not even the, in the evening they, they just play they play with the dogs and it is an illusion as if times could come back to normal again maybe that's the happiest dream i have that we can find an equilibrium between this um, technical stuff and, and real life. I don't know if you hear them there. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, happy, not, 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 never, never fighting. I haven't seen them fighting in the four weeks yet. Wow. How old are they, Heidi? The ones here out there, the, the boy who is sitting on the windowsill, Ascending, standing, and to cut, he is 12, I think. And the two girls, the smaller girls, nine and six or so. Mm. With them, it's really nice because, you know, I read them the fairy tales and they listen. And <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> Monia, I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> Just <laughs> I thought we would 
No, that's Just okay. have some stones. Okay. I was, uh, what turned up? But it's not my words. It's just one of these many, many wise words I have been reading recently. Uh, and when I listened to Heidi, it turned up again. There is nothing to improve. Mm. Everything is as it is. It's fine. And I'm still dancing around that sentence. It's by Yuji Krishnamurti. If you I don't know what you've heard of him. Um, he was really an opponent of Krishnamurti and his, his uh, idea about life are yeah, not very conservative. So actually, if we let it be as it is, if we release our grip on what we want it to be, maybe then that's the way to go. That's about all of it I can contribute right now. Please take over whoever feels like speaking. I, I feel that uh, for me, what I'm aware of emerging is a shift from doing to being. Um, and so in the past, I was probably 80% doing and 20% being, and now I'm trying to shift it at least to maybe 70% being and 30% doing, but um, not quite there yet. <laughs> That's gonna take some time. But uh, yeah, when I think of the uh, Gertrude's um, ideas about happiness, uh, you know, the moments that I had recently were really when I was just being. Um, I was just someplace and I could take in the atmosphere or uh, take in the beauty or some kind of feeling or spirit. And um, I'm, I'm trying to decide how much doing I have to continue with. And, and by doing, I mostly mean working. Uh, and occasionally the doing and the being are linked, they cross over. So the times that that happens at the same time are um, when I am playing piano and you know I'm practicing and practice, practice, but it also feels like I'm you know more fully immersed in it and I'm, I'm being with the music. And then I guess the other th task that I do a lot is cook. And honestly, if it feels like I'm just doing I try to skip it and have leftovers or something very simple and I don't get into cooking. But often when I'm cooking, I, I have the sense that I'm not just doing, but I'm also uh, being creative and I'm also enjoying just the process of, of being there with that. So yeah, I think for me, I'm, I'm looking for ways to continue with that shift. and. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with how it's going so far in terms of it does bring me more joy, but it's also, uh, it's scary and I'm not quite sure why it's scary. I think just letting the letting go process, you know, it's, it's different. So I have to let go of some things in order to do that more fully. So that part's scary. And I'm done. Thank you. Hanili or Victoria. Who wants to go? Okay. As you're asking the question with the invitation, I had the sense of wings. And I'm, as you're all sharing, I'm, it's a very interesting feeling because I'm, I can't connect it to anything specifically. I'm just incredibly aware of very strong wing, wings that's like eagles. We've got a very wide diameter and it's very strong and it's just freely soaring through the sky. And I feel it in my body. <laughs> so there is, that's what's emerging for me. The meaning to it um, is not there at the moment, it's directed. Uh, but it gives a sense of lightness as well at the same time. 
And I was touched by both you, Victoria and Monia, with your dreaming. I've also had some very interesting dreams. I wouldn't say they were terrible dreams, but like really interesting dreams. And I was wondering what's busy happening for me. It's, it's like, as you were speaking, it's like I'm there with you, I can feel it. So there's something about the level of consciousness that's currently happening for me. My awareness that somebody can just say a word and there's that connection, like I'm physically there next to this person. So I'm picking up things from other people as well in my dream world, which is not my stuff. So I'm, I know exactly because I'm a very vivid dreamer. So I remember all of them when I wake up. And I'm, I usually wake up like 3.30, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And previously I was going to my practice, but this time what's happening now, I would do a little bit of my practice and then I just fall asleep spontaneously. And then these very interesting dreams happen, which is like, I'm like a bystander. I'm looking observer into other people's life, their dream world. So it's a very interesting feeling. And I know, I know practice where you go from one dream into the other to the other, you unlocking doors all the time. And uh, then you are able to, man to more control those dreams and be creative in those dreams of the realities that you'd like to bring into the world. But this is different. So I have a sense there is something going on collectively because of the way we connect and the, the, the level of our connections, our relationships, that something is happening on, something is opening up. That's the sense I have. So I feel that's also what's emerging, just listening to all of you and being with you right now. I'm complete. Thank you. Um, I, I, the thing that I think disturbs me the most about the dreaming is that, um, and Monia spoke to this too, that the dreams are so vivid, they, they permeate my waking hours. And, and that's, that's the part that I, um, I was going to say I resent it, but I don't know. <laughs> whom or what I resent, but um, I'm, I'm seeing clearly in the last couple of years, because I've had this issue with dreams, basically since my mother died, that I'm accepting it as a necessary process. And it's, it's, um, there's a, there's a, was a very wise Trappist monk, Father Thomas Keating, who um, sort of con combined the contemplative mystical tradition with contemporary psychology. And so he used to talk about God as the divine therapist. And um, so I am, I'm taking that position as it were, that, that this is a necessary process I have to go through in order to be healed. Um, but what I, what annoys me is that it's, is this permeability that then, then things go through the day and then I start to forget what's real and what's dream. And, um, and that's very disorienting. And if I feel like that impedes my, my sort of waking life activities. I mean, just as an example, I, I had a dream. I, I, I like lately I've had dreams within dreams. And in my dream last night, I was trying to remember in the dream, whether it was a dream or it was real, that I had some very um, rare brain tumor that had to be operated or I would go blind. And this is, was in my dream, but, but, but I realized waking up this morning that that dream about seeing the surgeon about this rare condition was another dream. Well, I mean, obviously, I, I, I mean, I hope. <laughs> um, but it's that kind of thing where it's like, um, it's, it's all, it's, it's sort of all thrown together. I don't feel like I'm going through door after door. I feel like it's, it's, I've sort of like Alice in Wonderland and it ended up in this, this total sort of confusion and it's a world unto itself. And I'm, I'm sort of struggling to make sense out of it. So that's, that's for me, the difficulty right now. Mm -hmm. And um, can you say something about your happiest dream? <laughs> me you're asking mm -hmm. me oh um 
Well, that's the other thing that's so sad. <laughs> my, my happiest dreams are always, always um, dreams of my husband, my late husband. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what's and interesting. If, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm not okay. talking about the dream in the night. But oh, dreams like, in the daytime. Like something that you, that's oh. emerging that you that could be part of your world <laughs> Maybe. oh yes okay so, that's better that's so the, better. <laughs> the more daydreaming than night oh, dreaming yeah 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 it's actually um inspired by Heidi um <laughs> and all of you I have this dream now now that I you know since the pandemic have have learned the the graces and the benefits of technology I have this dream of creating a platform um, I actually already have a, have a, um, what do you call those things, URL <laughs> um, that I thought, so I already actually like have that, um, but I haven't built the website yet. It, it's a, a place where I can, um, I just wanted, I want to create a place where people can come and be safe and um, explore and and then where I can just, I'll be there to share, just share whatever knowledge and wisdom I've, I've been able to um, receive and have it be a space. It, it is, it's, it's totally inspired by you, Heidi. <laughs> um, but it's, but it's not, it's not, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't presume to make it an integral space because I don't know enough. I still don't know enough about um, Beatrice and I still feel like imposters in this, these groups, but we're trying to learn. Um, but just, for example, all the things that I've, I've, um, that I have been sort of receiving and and um going after in terms of the and like christine said doing it versus being so it's a being space actually and um and i'm really yeah that's a dream that i'm very excited about actually thank you The first thing that came to my mind was, who is dreaming? <laughs> and what is real? So not in a sense of confusion or so, but more really like a quest, like a, like a, yeah, that, that was one part. And the other one was um, yeah, creating a, a container of being out of which action arises. So it's not either or, or this versus, yeah, being versus doing, more of this creating a being and that what I'm doing right now is one possibility um, really coming from that place of inspiration um, being um, and then say what is the most powerful or what is an action or just or maybe a symbolic action that comes out of this so so that that would be my next question. So how can you that what you just shared your happiest dream, like from more doing to more being, how can that be expressed not as an action with a goal? <laughs> so in order, so I want this and in order to I do this more like expression of your happiest dream, the most powerful emergence of, yeah, this, this being. <laughs> and is there anything that can be expressed either in gestures, in actions, in, yeah.
Mine is, mine is, sorry, Monja, you go. No, go ahead. Mine is what's emerging from inside. It's writing about the soaring on the eagle's wings. So writing the story and watching it happen. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, it's writing. Uh, not as a goal, but just to be, to find a, a thread. And the other way of being is for me now, uh, relaxing into suchness. This is what- Yes, that's a nice word. <laughs> suchness. It's, it's, suchness. What, I didn't write it down, but this pops up all of the time, relaxing into suchness. Not. Uh, being grasping after the, after being, but relaxing to suctions and the relaxing. It should be easier now for me, but actually, it isn't. <laughs> it's the doing has been yeah has been dominant in my life all the time. So writing, and I just had a look at all the books are filled with my handwriting and I hope my children will just burn them because nothing really changed but it was just yeah an occupation so writing nine years you do yeah mm. I wanted to go back to something Victoria had said, and um, I don't say this because I feel like it's any kind of advice or recommendation or like I know anything about this, but as you were talking about that, how disturbing it is that the, the daytime and the nighttime are kind of merging and you can't keep them separate, it just struck me that maybe that's the point, um, not keeping them separate, not being dual, about it, this is this and this is this, but a little bit more non-dual where maybe the permeation is what, um, yeah, maybe something about the permeation. Well, actually I, just now in the relaxing into suchness, I, I felt kind of a little tinge of, um, I don't know if it's embarrassment or self-conscious thinking of this dream that I have, I thought, you know, there I go again, having like, it's always this, the idea has to become something. I've always had a problem with that, that, that it's not enough just to, <laughs> to relax into suchness and just, just be, be who I am or what, um, but I've always had to turn it into, felt a compulsion to turn it into a project. And I guess with the dreaming, it's the frustration of, um, and the fact that Hanali and Monia have both talked about writing. Um, everybody I know from friends to family, to therapists, <laughs> to spiritual leaders, to <laughs> people on the street um, has told me to write everyone has the same message. And when I go on spiritual retreats, um, I always feel like God is telling me that to write. So, and I'm, um, my late husband always called me Jonah. And I think that's what he was talking about that, um, not specifically about writing, but about everything that I'm always, the, the more clear something is, the, the faster and further I run away from it. Um, <laughs> So, and I think that's also the hang up of the, the project thing, because I do write and I love writing, um, but all the writing I do is, um, is professional. So I have, I have these categories, you know, I write in order to publish, but writing, and then, and then when I really like in a word mood, then I write a very flowery email to somebody because I have to write an email to that person anyway. So I use the pretext. But just to write, to process, um, 
which everyone says is so healthy. And so, and, and so to your point, Christine, about the permeability and everything, I think to me, I, I immediately, when you were talking, saw, saw the connection between that and the writing idea that it's this non-duality to say, okay, this, this is the suchness. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is, um, so the writing would come out of that, out of the, the sort of the, the bringing together of all of these elements in a, in a, in an organic way and um, find, you know, find the coherence there. But um, well, now, now I feel like you've, you've given me a task. <laughs> so let's see if I can live up to it. I, I, lately I don't write anymore. So as we were talking about writing, but I wanted to share another thing, which I'm noticing. First of all, about relaxing into suchness, I'm asking myself if it is not also a question of age, when we get older, that it's, oops, somebody disappeared, Gertrude. Yeah, when we get older, it's, I think it's more, maybe, we don't have to, to do anymore so much because the future is not so long anymore and the goals are not so far away so that we can relax a little bit and uh, be more, how can I say, modest about <laughs> what to plan. But what I wanted to share is uh, I, I feel a big shift in my way of being. You know, for instance, I go to bed, I wake up, I, the day goes over, then in the evening, I think, oh, it's evening again. And then in the morning, oh, it's morning again. So it's like a continuum. It's not really a difference between night and day. Yeah, maybe at night I sleep longer. Sometimes I sleep also day a little bit, but I wanted to say it's not this division. This is night and you don't do anything and then you go up and and for instance i can notice that when i meet the people and i think oh did i see them already today what is today so uh, as if it is you know there is no no today and no yesterday and no tomorrow just a, 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 a continuous I wouldn't even call it timeline. A continuous being with the words of Monia, maybe. And I like that a lot. And I feel that I am much more, is it relaxed? But letting go, you know, I let the people do what they want to do. And I find that they are creating beautiful things. And I don't have all the time to stay there and control and check, are they doing it right? And I don't know what, I just, allow them to, to do that or better I I don't want to be in constant control and doing everything myself <clears throat> or you can also call it letting go of certain ideas how things have to be and that's an interesting an interesting experience Heidi you sounded like a Garfield cartoon I just saw a couple of hours ago uh, one cat says, tells him, oh, I slept all day yesterday. And he looks and says, oh, was there a yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, sorry I dropped out. And um, I, I would love to go back to uh, Victoria and ask you a question, if allowed. What is not preventing you from writing? What is not preventing me from writing? I don't know if I'm, if it's too early in the morning or. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a, a Zen koan. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to answer right now, but maybe you okay. can. Just write that question down and ponder on it. 
Yeah, it's it, it. I like it. I mean, I like the backwardness. I mean, you're whatever. <laughs> Let me think about that for a second. But it was resonating with your backwardness uh, at the moment. <laughs> so I thought <laughs> that's a weak flow question as well. Okay, I'll sit with that for a minute and let other people um, continue. <laughs> let me think this over. Did everybody go? I, I I lost track because I was so occupied with getting back in. <laughs> For me, I, I I did I had um what do you call it Mundo Zen um introduction um i don't know what that is called but one of the things was um what is that space like or i don't know exactly that that column and i immediately it came out from here and said eternal and and it was like spreading out that my whole rest is like and um, that was resonating with what you said, Hanili. Really like spreading out as far as, yeah. And you could do it like this and, or Phoenix or whatever. That's something like that. That came up. So maybe I should have asked that question before, but I want to do it right now and it's not to answer it's just to be be with it <laughs> what if everything we need is already here right now right here is here available <laughs> Can I answer? Also, we are yes, not supposed not. to answer. No, you you don't have to answer. You can share, but let us sink in a little bit with it. Okay, so thank you. And I think having embody that question that that's, yeah, if we jump to 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 answer it, uh, we miss that wonderful feeling of really letting the receiving take place. Okay, so if anybody wants to share, but you don't have to, because I, um, so we can do that in the in the closing round. Maybe you just share what what came up, not as an answer, but as an emergence, and then let's go to the appreciation round. So, what do you want to acknowledge yourself for, and whom do you want to? appreciate for what quality so i want to jump in and share what happened to me because mm -hmm. when you said this what if you had already everything here what you need or something like this no it was and for me it was yes yeah, sure i have it it was very a very uh definite feeling and and conviction it just popped up so i didn't have to to think about it or to to feel into it it was just there and so i wanted to share that like it was not thought out it was present it was appearing like this yeah and as a check out while i'm mid with you finally there is some sun again and i look into the green of the of the trees and I'm inspired and it's really it's everything here and 
yeah that's it you wanted something else uh, uh, yeah i asked i asked uh would you want to acknowledge yourself for appreciate yourself for and yeah, for um the, if the, the, you have anything to say to the others as appreciation what quality you want to appreciate in whom oh this is a, a longer question myself uh that uh life is let's say emerging in these pathways which seem to be very difficult in one way and very easy in the same moment so uh, easy is not the right word it's sort of natural that it flows this this way and that i can live that that's uh, appreciation then appreciation for everybody of you and I had an exchange with Hanele on email, which I very much appreciate. It was, uh, yeah, and I hope we go ahead with these. And everybody of you, Christine, to see you and that you stick with us. It's it, also, it's in the morning, the same like Victoria, that you have this energy to get up and, and be with us. That's, that's wonderful. And Monia, you sitting there always as the real, reliable back bedrock <laughs> <laughs> of, of the women uh, women's integral things, you know, that's uh, very much appreciated. And Gertrud, uh, we know each other quite a while and I appreciate your, your way of being and of doing, of <laughs> being. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. You hand over to whom? I would like to continue uh, because your statement that everything is already available sort of was full circle. What I quoted in the beginning there is nothing to improve. And uh, so this is actually suchness and I appreciate about myself and about every single one of you that we are aware, that we are awake and that we are staying curious what is developing. And I guess this is a very important quality of each of us that we are able to share and to listen to each other. Thank you. Um, I relate it to Gertrude's um, question or comments about having everything we need. And I found myself going to, yes, I have everything I need and I can find that. Even if I, if it's not apparent, I certainly can, it's accessible to me. But then I turned it into, but what do I want? And the things that I want come more from my heart and really had more to do with other people and kind of the state of the world. So while I can feel content and complete, um, my heart tells me that not everybody has what they need. Not everybody is um, in that place. So that was a little bit of a dilemma. So I brought it back to perhaps what I, I still have what I need to be okay with that, that, you know, this is kind of how the world works, um, those imperfect parts of it. Um, so I still probably have what I need to be okay and at peace with that, um, but certainly don't have everything I want in terms of what, what could be out there. Um, and I appreciate myself for um, participating here and looking more at being versus doing. And I appreciate uh, Hanali because she keeps reminding me to check in with my body. So at least once, if not more times during our, our uh, sessions together, she talks about her body and what she's noticing. 
And so I appreciate um, that reminder. So I like that and I'm complete. Thank you. Well, Garrett, Chad, as soon as you, um, as soon as you posed that question about what if we, what if we already have everything we need, um, I thought, oh, good, she answered the Zen koan, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to answer it. Um, <laughs> so um, that's the perfect answer, I think, for that question. And um, I, oh, now I forgot what before the appreciation round was that. The sharing is, yeah, and you did, you did okay. share what came out. Um, yeah. What I appreciate about myself is that I'm slowly but surely learning to, to follow um, the spirit um, nudging me like this morning <clears throat> when I had made up my mind that I couldn't afford to come here because of my lecture preparation. So I'm, I appreciate this, this sort of growing tendency to, um, maybe that's part of relaxing into suchness too. Um, <laughs> apropos of relaxing into suchness, I appreciate Monia. Yeah, I was thinking, um, Heidi said bedrock. I thought, I, I always think of Monia as the, um, the Buddha. <laughs> and <laughs> um, it's, it's partially also your, your, the whole gestalt of your space and the way you sit, but um, it always makes me feel grounded and like I'm safe. Um, like as long as I'm in the presence of the Buddha, then I'm, I, I think things will all work out. <laughs> I appreciate Hanali, you're right above Moni on my screen, because um, you are just like that flower behind you. I, for me, just to see your smile, um, I, I feel like, bursting into one of those um those old songs you know whatever I'd, I'd walk a thousand miles for one of your smiles or whatever <laughs> I just love your joyfulness because it always makes me feel because it's so yeah like Christine said it's so embodied and I feel like it's so genuine and it's so much who you are but it's for me it's like a like a like a whole a spray a bouquet of flowers um so it's always very um very brightening for me and Christine, I appreciate you for your um, your humility, and because you you bring so much wisdom, but always with this this gentleness and humility, um, which is really beautiful. And I appreciate Garrett Trout for your um, cutting through all the all the chaos and confusion and nonsense and sort of. <laughs> creating the line so that we can relax into suchness, um, asking the hard questions and, but also generously like you did for me today, um, providing the answers so I don't fail the exam. <laughs> <laughs> and Heidi, I appreciate you for, for literally changing my whole life. I mean, I, if I hadn't met you, none of this would have happened and I wouldn't be here. And I don't think, I I shudder to think what my life would be like without the gifts that you brought. So, so I love all of you and I appreciate all of you. And um, on that note, I guess, oh, so I think Gertrude, you're going to close us out. <laughs> Anybody else who didn't speak? I'm sorry, Hanalee. And now after Never. my interview. <laughs> Yeah, I thought somehow. <laughs> Sorry. That's an early morning, early morning chaos That's in my fun. head. So good when you asked what if everything we already have everything. I just felt a feeling of flying. So it was there's nothing stopping the flying, whatever that means. And I really would like to. First, thank you all. First, Monia, for that suchness. It's this process that I sometimes lead where we go into my I-ness, my suchness, my we-ness, my it-ness, all those things. But the suchness one has always stood out for me. So thank you for bringing that in. And Heidi, thank you for your courage to always speak what you truly believe is true and your curiosity to also follow that. And 
it brings a lot of groundedness for me sometimes. And I, I really appreciate that. And Christine, you, you have also a way of always just, there is something in you that grounds me. So when you speak, it takes me out of my flattery energy and it really brings me into the moment. So thank you for that. And you remind me then afterwards when we depart to the next time of that in my body. And Victoria, both you and Monia, I love that you brought in your dreams because there's something going on for me in that world as well. And I'm really curious about it because I'm such a vivid dreamer. So thank you for bringing that in and for your vulnerability of sharing your, your experiences in such an honest way. And just looking at your eyes, I see you know, the sparks in your eyes. So thank you for that. And Gertrude, you always share this beautiful process with us. And when you go into your own, what I appreciate about you is when you go into your own space, when you ask yourself those questions, there's a sense of integrity that I pick up all, every time. And there's a beauty of watching you doing that. So thank you that we could be present to that. And I'm pretty sure myself that I can feel you right now. All of you. It's like you're sitting next to me. And I'm really looking forward to the day that I can touch you all. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Hmm. So for me, one of the most precious moments is when we can hear stillness. And that's 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 here now with us. And actually, this question, what if maybe you could add want and need if that was already available. Just, just be open for that. This also always makes a difference for me. And really this bodily feeling that I received that question, not so much the answer, but the question. Um, and I appreciate myself for grabbing the facilitator stick <laughs> today. Just so it just felt right to do that. And uh, you playing along. And uh, Monia, I appreciate your, um, like, really want to know, <laughs> really the, the researcher's uh, curiosity and and... Yeah, sometimes the things don't go the way you want it, but you keep going and <laughs> really wanting to know how, how that works. Um, Heidi, your, today I could feel your grandmothership, like really being that. <laughs> So when you talk about those kids, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about my grandchildren. And, and, and there is this like, hi, <laughs> colleague, grandmother. Um, yeah. So I, I really, I could feel that very much that you took that on and, and that you're embodying it with joy and ease and yeah. And, and, that is a special love that kids don't get from the, the, the parents and the teachers and whoever. Yeah. And I'm happy for the children that they have you as grandmother. Victoria, for showing up. <laughs> and... Uh, Christine, for your thoughtfulness, also about yourself. Yeah, humbleness was a word that was used. And yes, yeah, say, okay, 
I'm here. <laughs> uh, and your compassion. And Hanili. It feels so resonating with that, with that energy. And also you, for me, you are an expression of spring with flowers, with the way you are being with, yeah, behind you, this, this like the spring quality. So ladies, I'm complete. And I hand over to Heidi to say the last words in this That's session. Good. Just thank you and have a nice time the next two weeks. And then we see you again. And whatever your projects are, I wish they, that they go as you want them to go. And enjoy life. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have one quick postscript. Um, Beatrice, she loves this group more than life itself. And <laughs> I asked her yesterday if she was going to be um, going this morning. And she said, she said, oh, I, I wish I could. She said, I, I have to, because um, today's a, hol a holiday, a sort of a holiday, but it's um, anyway, one of her charges, speaking of um, mothers and grandmothers, is this adorable little boy, Noah. And his school is on holiday, so um, she said. She said his mother said that at nine o'clock, uh, when I come to the door, he's going to be all dressed up and ready to go to the zoo. <laughs> so, so she's at the Central Park Zoo with little Noah, who's three years old. And um, and and because originally she said maybe I can get him to take a nap so I can go to Women Matters, <laughs> and, <laughs> but then she found out about the zoo plan, so that's not likely. Anyway, she sends her love because she she really loves all of you and she loves this group. And I'm so grateful to all of you for being um, for sharing <laughs> sharing the role with me in her life. It's really beautiful. So love from Beatrice. Thank you, and bring her back our love and appreciation. Okay. Bye-bye.